Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a droplet on DigitalOcean, set up a new user, and log in via SFTP. Uh, for this video, I'm on a Mac running Yosemite, um, and we will be using Coda and Terminal um, for the SFTP. You should be able to use pretty much anything else, but for this, that is what we will be using for tools. Pardon my voice, I have a runny nose, and so I'm going to be sniffling. Okay, <clears throat> this is a pretty simple um, start. Let's start off by logging in to DigitalOcean. If you don't have a droplet created already, go ahead and do that. I'll set one up for, the, for this video. Um, I'll just make it really small. Um, name it whatever you want to. I'm just going to name this one demo. Select your regions. Keep it on New York. Um, if you have any questions about some of this stuff, just just go read through some of the stuff on DigitalOcean. Um, if you're not a DigitalOcean user, there'll be a link in the comments below. I highly recommend it. I was on Media Temple for a really long time before switching over to DigitalOcean, and I am I'm loving it. It takes a little bit of time to get used to learning some stuff in the in the command line, but when you do, it's it's worth it. It's really fast, uh, super flexible, really a great company. Okay, we're gonna stay with Ubuntu. Um, Ten or fourteen four is fine. Um, I'm gonna use personal my personal computer's SSH keys. Um, there will be another video soon about how to add and set up an SSH key. In the meantime, if you haven't, uh, I will include a link in the description for setting up an SSH key on your computer. It's really simple. It just takes a minute. Um, DigitalOcean has a great walkthrough for it, so I'll include that link below. Um, if you haven't done that, take a second now to go set that up and then come back and select the SSH key you've set up um, and, then, uh, and then come on back and keep going. Okay. Now we'll create our droplet. This takes a second to set up. So... Yeah. All right, I'm going to pause this and come back when it's done. We're back. So here we are inside of the droplet that we just set up. A uh, quick walkthrough here. Um, here's the, the name of our droplet demo. This is also your host name if you're ever using anything else like, uh, um, oh, I don't know, like SiteLeap or any of those things. You can use your IP address or this. Um, for your IP, you've got that right here. Uh, that's how you can check out anything that's going on, and that's also how we're going to get in via SSH, um, which is pretty easy. Um, and then here's some, you know, some information about it. Um, you can ignore some of this stuff for a while. You shouldn't have to power anything off or do any power cycles unless things go horribly wrong. Um, you can get to your console here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the DigitalOcean um, dashboard, I just say take a second to kind of poke around. Uh, it's really, really kind of really simple. Everything's really self-explanatory. We're going to be spending most of our time just with this IP address here. Okay. Now, after setting up a new droplet, you are emailed a temporary password. Um, we can get around having to go grab the temporary password, though, by just resetting it ourselves. So um, this will be pretty easy. So inside of our terminal here, we're going to um, SSH into our root. So this is pretty easy. I'm just going to type in S, uh, SSH root at, and then we're going to use the IP address from our droplet here, so there we go. Uh, it's gonna ask you if uh, this is actually the RSA fingerprint that you want to verify, and we're gonna say yes. And it's added it to our list of known hosts. Um, if you ever want to check out your list of known hosts, you can do that in, it's stored in a file on your computer. I think it's under uh, the RSA file. Okay, so now we're logged in. So you see here it says root at demo. Um, 
it's that easy. We're logged into the root of our droplet. Now, for security reasons, whenever you set up a new droplet, you want to set up a new user for it too. Uh, for both tracking and for securities, we want to lock out the root and only use the user from now on. So to set up a new user, it's pretty easy, but let's go ahead and reset the password for this thing. Um, we'll do that by typing pass WD, and we can enter a new Unix password. Um, here, I'll just create something easy. Uh, your password won't show up when you type it. That's fine. It's just for security stuff. It'll ask you to type it a second time. If you get it wrong, it'll let you know. So now I've set my, my, uh, my root username and my password. Pretty easy. Extremely easy, actually. But we're going to change all this stuff and uh, not use it from now on. So... Um, the next step is to set up a new user. Uh, to do this, and this is going to be the user that we use from now on for our F SFT SFTPs, uh, for any other logins that we need. Okay, so to do this, we're just going to use the add user command and set up a new username. I'll just do temp. Okay, bam, new user set up. Let's enter a new password. I'm going to say temp pass. go. You can enter in any of this information if you want to. Um, this is beneficial, I guess, if you have a lot of people working in your company and you just want to be able to see who's who. Pretty easy. Okay. You'll be prompted to see, uh, enter if this information is correct. Just hit yes after a quick review. And we now have our user set up. Pretty cool. Okay. Let me pause this for a second to blow my nose. Good grief. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. I'm back. Okay, so we just set up a new user. Pretty easy. Um, now we've got to give them some, some uh, permissions principles and stuff like that. So we're going to uh, set up the permissions and start to be able to switch away from using the root all the time. So we're going to type in uh, visudo, V-I-S-U-D-O. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. We're going to type it in, hit enter. It opens up this uh, command line interface here. We'll come down here. We're going to change a couple things. We're going to come down here to where it says this section here, the user privilege specification. We already have our root in there, but we're going to add our new user um, temp. I think it was temp. Yeah. And we'll enter all equals all. Oh. oh, essentially saying we're going to give all access to that user. Okay, pretty easy. Now to get out of this, you're going to um, do uh, option X. Oh, I'm sorry, control X. Yeah, control X. To get out of that, hit yes to save or Y, and then hit enter, and it drops you out. So again, you're going to control X, hit the Y key, Hit enter and you're back out of there. Okay, so now we've set our uh, set our root permissions or our permissions for that new user for temp. Let me make sure I have the right yeah temp. Okay, <laughs> make sure I'm setting the right username. Okay, so next what we have to do is configure the SSH for that user. So we're going to type in nano, and we're going to set up uh, we're going to SSH SSHD config. Okay. So that's a string we're going to type in to um, set up the SSH stuff for this user. Now we can change the port here for security reasons. Um, this is all of these things we're doing now are just kind of for added security benefits. 22 is our default port. Um, you can change that to something else if you want to. It can be anything between 1025 and any number between 1025 and 65536. 65,536. Um, so you have a huge range. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it at, you know what? I'll do this. I'll, 23,400 is what I'll do. Write this down. Store it someplace. Save it on your computer or anywhere. It doesn't matter. If you lose this, it's going to be nearly impossible to log in to your, uh, log into your SSH. 
um, or log in via whatever. It's going to be extremely difficult. So make sure you write down this port number. Uh, it's very important. We're going to leave the protocol at two. Um, and we want to restrict the, um, the root login here. Okay, so right now, permit root login is set to yes. We want to set this to no to essentially keep anyone from logging in with the root user. From now on, you'll only log in with the temp user, the user you just created, um, whatever, whatever you named that thing. And uh, root will no longer be allowed to log in. We'll come, very, we'll come down here to the very bottom of all this stuff. You can just scroll down through. Um, and we are going to enter use DNS. Set that to no. Uh, these are just two kind of extra security things here. And then we're going to say allow users. And we're going to say what users we want to allow to log in. But go ahead and enter root just in case you change your mind in the future about allowing, you to log, uh, allowing root to log in. And um, then we also want the user that we just created, temp. Okay. Just like before, we're going to hold down control and hit X. We're going to save by pressing the Y button and then press enter to get back out here into our terminal. Okay. Cool. Now we just have to reload our SSH. So to do that, pretty easy. Just type in reload SSH. It does it pretty quickly. Now open up a new terminal window. Don't close your other one yet. We still want the rooted demo open in case we have to make changes in case this didn't work right. Um, and now you cross your fingers, then you try to log into the root with your new user. So, okay. So we type in SSH um, and then we are going to change our port with this. And we're going to use the new port that we just created for me. That was 23400. Let's see if this works. Keep your fingers crossed. Temp at, and then we're going to use the IP address here again. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Hit enter. We're asked for our password. This is the password that you typed earlier when you set up the user. Oh wait, mine was temp pass. Bam, and we're in. Awesome. So now we see that we're logged in here with uh, with temp at demo. Whereas over here, we were root at demo. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we have our new user set up. From now on, use that user that you set up. If you're adding new users and you're giving them new access to your, uh, um, to your files and your droplet, make sure you set up a new user for each person. All right, now it's a login via SFTP. Um, I am using Coda. I'm a huge fan. This is, uh, I'm going to use... Coda 2, terminal, I'm sorry, uh, transport is built into, transmit, yeah, the FTP software by Coda is built into um, this program. So we're going to start off by adding a new site. Um, if you're using things like Cyberduck or Firezilla, you can do this uh, by essentially just creating a new SFTP connection um, in terminal and in Coda, I'm sorry, good grief, in transmit and in Coda, uh, so many words. Uh, you can right click inside of your sites folder here, uh, click add a new site, or you can do it too by going through the, the file uh, command up here. So we're going to do it this way. Uh, just to make sure you don't get confused, go ahead and add a nickname. I'm going to call this uh, temp droplets login for the temp user. Okay. And then switch over here to your server. Make sure you're set on SFTP. And we're going to use our IP address here to log in. So we're going to grab this from our droplet, drop it into your server. And now we're going to use our username that we set up. So for me, it's temp. And the, uh, the password that we have too, which is temp pass. And then my, uh, the new port number that we set up. So for me, that's 23400. If I'm like, oh, wait, can you back this? 23,400. If I'm lucky, this is going to work. Let's see. Hit save. Let's double click it. Go see if it gets logged in. And bam, we're in. Just like that. So it drops me into my temp folder here. I can go back out to the, uh, to the root and see everything that I've got inside of my droplet. Um, 
naturally we'll be able to publish things into our var and www folder. There'll be another um, tutorial about how to set up your www folder using uh, uh, using nginx, of which I'm a fan instead of Apache. So that will come soon. But this is how you uh, log in, uh, create new users, create a new droplet, and log into SFTP using Coda, DigitalOcean, and your terminal. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And um, as always, there are going to be links in the description for some of the things that we talked about during this video. If you're new to DigitalOcean, there will be a link down there as well. Feel free to click on that to, uh, to start your DigitalOcean account. All right, more to follow. Thanks, you guys.